So uh, my proposition is about um, how Army teachers will fail to stop gun violence on school campuses. Um, it seems every few years we have, um, the U.S. is hit with a lot of uh, school shootings. Um, the first one in 1999, before a lot of you were born, um, the Columbine shooting took place. And it was one of the first uh, mass school shootings in the U.S. Um, 15 students and teachers all killed by two of her classmates. Uh, in 2012, the tragedy of Sandy Hook took place. Uh, 20 children, aged 6 to 7, were all killed by a gunman. And then the most recent shooting last year was in Parkland, Florida, where 17 students were killed by one of their former classmates. Um, these tragedies have imposed a never-ending battle of how to stop gun violence from entering our schools. There's been many debates of how to stop this, um, including Army t teachers, something that President Donald Trump has uh, proposed to do. However, as a future educator, uh, Army teachers will fail to prevent gun violence from happening for these following reasons. Um, it can lead to more aggression, guns will be easily accessible, and it may, may be ineffective and costly. Um, so first, bringing guns onto a school campus can, campus can lead to more aggression and violence. In 1967, the term weapon effects was coined. According to psycholo psychologydefinition.org, weapons effect means escalated hostility or an elevated prop propensity toward aggression uh, generated by just the sight of a weapon. So basically, if you're already aroused like by being mad, seeing a weapon will make it worse. Um, in 1967, or there has been substantial uh, amount of research that weapon uh, presence leads to higher aggression. Um, a study done by Leonard Berkowitz and Anthony LePage that exposed two groups to uh, a participant that they called uh, the Confederate. So what this guy did was he made these people angry, and so there was a control group. So they were put in two rooms. Uh, the control group was put into a room where on the table there was uh, sports equipment. It was like a, I think it was like a ski, a ski stick and a racket ball. And they were told, oh, this was left from our previous t-shirts. Don't touch it. Uh, just sit there. And then in the other room, they were uh, sat at a table with a pistol and a handgun. Um, so the only thing they were told to do was to, uh, it was like a shock therapy to towards the Confederate to, to show how aggressive they were. Um, but the people who were um, introduced to the guns on the table, they were more aggressive than the people who were introduced to the sports equipment. Um, so this is where the term uh, weapon effects comes from. Um, as students who have been through puberty in middle school and high school, our emotions and hormones are imbalanced and we're labeled as angsty teenagers with attitude problems. So we all know, we've all seen fights happen in middle school, we've all seen fights happen in high school, um, everyone's angry at each other. Uh, so with the presence of guns, it can make situations uh, a lot more detrimental. Um, which leads into the next point of how a gun can be easily accessible and can provoke students, other faculty members, and visitors to break into a teacher's classroom to steal a gun and target others. Um, it is already evident that students, teachers, and faculty members are targets of their peers or outsiders. The accessibility of a gun can make it easier for these attacks to unfold. According to an article from Violence Policy Center, the arguments against Army teachers are multiple. The gun, by definition, would potentially be available to every student, teacher, and school visitor. Moreover, <coughs> those contemplating armed attacks on schools would know that a gun is available and could act accordingly. So there's the reasons behind this was, is our school shootings. Um, so this leads to the last point, is that the training of using firearms can be expensive and ineffective. Uh, teachers are already responsible for the safety of their students, and with the added pressure of protecting students with the use of firearms may be ineffective. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but at the Columbine shooting, there was actually um, an armed guard that was hired there, and his name was Neil Gardner. He was a 15-year-old veteran of the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. Um, so when the shootings took place, he fired at one of the uh, gunmen, but he missed. And so this is an example that shows the ineffectiveness of having a veteran on campus. One can only imagine how well a mediocre uh, teacher can shoot. Uh, which leads to the next point, what kind of training will the government provide to, to the teachers and how much will it cost? Um, after the Parkman shooting, Donald Trump made a statement about wanting to arm a fifth of America's teachers. Uh, Huffington, Huffington Post did a calculation and came up with two numbers. 
Uh, the cheaper route came out to $251 million, and the more expensive and expansive route will be over $1 billion. Uh, 715,000 teachers make up a fifth of the whole teacher population. According to the article, in Maryland, there is a company that will charge $100 just for the bare minimum training of gun ownership. Um, not only will the government provide training, they also need to provide the gun. So the article considered a Glock G17, which is about $500 a piece. So if you do the math, uh, it'll be about $359 million uh, just to supply the gun to the 20% of these teachers, um, which also raises the question of how will the government pay for all these expenses. But uh, that's a whole different argument. I think. Well, you start off uh, with the same thing that I've heard in a couple of other speeches, making it sound like it's going to be an informative speech. You're going to tell us how arming teachers isn't going to work. Uh, basically, you do switch to a propositional statement right before you get to the preview, and that helps rescue that from the, the confusion that is being created there. Everybody wants to be careful about that sort of thing. So you did finally have a clear statement of the proposition. I, you did have a preview. You rushed through it a little bit. I think you need to pace yourself a bit on those points, uh, but you do sign most of those points as you get to them, and I thought that the organizationally it was easy to follow uh, the things that you're talking about. Uh, the uh, first point uh, depends a lot on this uh, theory and the study that you were making reference to, and um, the notion that the theory is widely accepted, I think, needs a little bit more proof. You explain what it is, uh, and the context in which the availability of the gun is going to increase the aggressiveness of the people involved I, I also has to be explained. The notion that somebody starts waving a gun, I can see where that is in fact the case. The idea that a gun is in the house or in the school or in the vicinity and that produces the result. That I think I, I'm going to need to see better proof on in order to accept the conclusion that you're suggesting here. You've got this long description of the study that happens which takes up a big chunk of your time but I'm not sure that it does much to convince us that in fact people are going to be more aggressive because there's a gun someplace in the vicinity. Uh, the idea I think is a, is a good one but the proof here I think is a little underwhelming. On the second point, um, the notion that the guns would be accessible to everybody, uh, there's a presupposition built in here that the gun would be accessible to everybody as opposed to uh, just the teachers. I'm not exactly sure why that assumption is made by the advocate that's being quoted here. Um, the uh, you know I haven't heard uh, an extensive discussion about what the uh, rules of engagement would be or what the criteria would be uh, for storing a weapon. Uh, I'm sure it's not just they keep it in the bottom drawer of the desk uh, so it's accessible for the teacher whenever they need it because there are plenty of days that I'd be using it. Uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's just uh, I think the presuppositions here have to be explained more and why this would be a problem you know, that, that uh, somebody would be able to get to it. And it's not hard to maybe show in a couple of examples of that. There are already examples of teachers who've had guns either at schools under a permit process and then the guns went off or that uh, somebody else got a hold of them. If you had a couple of examples like that, I think that would make your argument look work a little bit better. Your explanation about the training cost is fine. Uh, you know, cost is uh, an important issue, but I'm not sure it's an insurmountable issue on these points. Um, it just is a question of what resources are available. How important your argument is in terms of cost, I don't know. The question is uh, its effectiveness, and the one example that you have is that we had somebody who was ineffective uh, at Columbine, and therefore anybody else would be equally ineffective. I think that that's a, a big leap to make, but at least you've got an example on that particular point that works pretty well. All right, thank you.